Hey, Pat LeFemin here from Bowsight, and we're here to review the brand new 2014 M1100i by Moultrie. Uh, this is their top of the line camera for 2014, uh, and it has some uh, pretty neat enhancements over their previous cameras, uh, both in terms of features uh, as well as um, just settings and resolution uh, quality upgrades from uh, previous models. The first thing uh, when I looked at the package anyways is that it has a two inch color view screen. It's bigger than the, the previous ones and it's sharper. Uh, it looks pretty nice. But we're gonna test it and show you what everything looks like. Uh, the other thing is it's got an 80 foot no glow nighttime illumination LEDs. Uh, these are a little bit different than uh, those, what a lot of game camera companies are doing and just putting that black piece of plastic over it. Uh, when you do that, it kind of cuts down on your, your range on your LEDs. So. Moultrie's come up with these no-glow illumination uh, LEDs that uh, give you a pretty good uh, illumination range. I think this one's 80 foot um, and, you know, pretty, really good, um, you know, range on those things. Uh, it's got some other small features like backlit navigation buttons. So I know when I fumble around those things in the dark, I've got to put my flashlight on it. Uh, now you'll be able to see uh, the buttons. No, not a huge feature, but kind of nice. Uh, the photo resolutions have changed. It's uh, the lowest setting is 1280 by 720. And that's typically where I keep mine uh, because all I'm doing is just game camera surveys, not really trying to do magazine quality photos, but I guess you can now. The enhanced setting on the photos is 4608 by 2592. So I guess if you wanted a life-size poster of, your, uh, of that buck you've been chasing, or hopefully you kill him, and then you'll have a nice life-size poster of when he was alive. Uh, you can do that with this resolution. Uh, the video resolution has also been enhanced. It's got two uh, modes. HD mode is uh, 1280 by 720, and uh, full HD is 1920 by 1280, so that's better. And we're gonna test the, uh, the video resolution as well. Okay. First thing you have to understand is this is very similar to all the previous cameras. Um, you have an infrared aiming device. You've got a nice big screen here now, bigger than they had before. Uh, and then you have um, a series of directional buttons to navigate the menus. The middle one's enter. This is a menu button, but we're just gonna turn it on for now. So wait for it to come on. There it goes. Now notice it didn't come up with a security screen. That's because it's set to the default right now, but let's go and hit menu. And then we're gonna go down to uh, general settings. So the first one is reset the default. Let's just say yes. So that's done. Uh, erase all images. Let's say yes to that. Formats the card, clears it all out. Okay, manage memory. Uh, this is new. Uh, you can overwrite the oldest one, so it'll just kind of loop over it, or you can um, choose not to overwrite, so when it fills up, it'll just stop. So I always choose not to overwrite. And uh, upgrade firmware, right now we're going to say no, but it's a good idea to do that. Uh, set a security code, I'm going to go ahead and do that, so let's go and just set all nines for now. Very simple, and that is not my security code. And then this one is um, AC Connect, no, I'm just running off batteries. And a Wi-Fi SD card, and the answer to that one is no as well. Uh, we want the temperature units in Fahrenheit. And input data, yes. So that'll give you the date, time, card name, or the camera name. Um, I think it gives you the moon phase. It's a bunch of information, and I always say yes to that. You can change the name of the camera. Right here, it's set to Multicam by default. I usually change mine to something like Camo One or whatever. If this is if this is Oak Grove, it'll be you know OG01 or something. But for this purposes, we're not going to bother changing the name. And then this one is uh, um, Motion Preset. Let's have that one as on. Oh, Motion Freeze. I'm sorry, and that's on. And then it sets the video length. So we like the video length to be pretty long, like 90 seconds. So I'm going to set that. But you can go all the way down to five seconds, which I don't really quite understand. But I guess if you're 
catching, catching a perpendicular trail probably makes sense. Since we're doing food plots, I like a longer video. Video sound, I like it on. Video quality, you can do full HD 1920 by 1080, or you can do just straight HD 1280 by 720. I always like the full HD, uh, but understand it's going to use a little bit more battery and a little bit more uh, card capacity. Photo quality is high. Um, you can set it to medium, which is where I usually set it, especially if I'm doing trail camera surveys and taking pictures of lots of deer. Um, but you can go all the way up to 12 megapixels if you wanted to, or all the way down to less than a megapixel for low. But I like to keep it at medium. Date and time, I don't need to set that, but this is where you would set it. And then that's it. Those are the general options for the camera. Very simple. So let's go ahead and set all the different options that we have. We're going to go back to menu, just hit the menu button. So you have uh, motion detect, time lapse, and time lapse plus motion detect. So let's talk about all three. Then you have your general settings and your playback. Let's go back to motion detect and let's hit options. So when you get into these main mode screens like this motion detect, it'll give you a summary of the current options. So we have it set at photo with a 10 second delay and one uh, photo per shot. You can click start and it'll do the countdown uh, to get the camera ready to go. Um, or you can click options. So we're gonna click options. So this gives you a reset motion detect options. So if you wanted to do a recommended setup, which makes it easy for you, or if you wanna do max performance, which is where I like to have it, or you can do max battery here as well. But we're gonna set it as max performance. This kind of makes it easy for you to, um, to see how it's set up. Detection delay, I usually set mine for somewhere between 10 and 30 seconds depending on how I have it set up. If it's a food plot, I have it set at 30 seconds. If it's a trail, I'll probably have it set at five seconds. But let's just set it at 30 seconds for this test. Multi-shot, you can do three bursts. It'll just do boom, 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 three pictures. Or you can do three triggered. I kind of like the three triggered. And then photo or video. I'm going to do photo on this one, but this is where if you wanted to shoot video instead for motion detect, you could do that. So just let's just go to photo. And that's it. It gives you a summary. Photo or video, you're set at photo. Delay is set at 30 seconds, and the multi-shot is three triggered. So that's the motion detect one. If we wanted to do this as a, as a video, we would go back, go back to motion, and then choose video. And then see here, photo or video, it's now set to video with a 30 second delay and three triggered. But we're not going to do that. We're going to set it back to uh, photo. And that's it. If you want to start it, you just hit this button. But so let's look, look at the other options as well. So time lapse. So this option I really liked and I was very impressed with uh, what they've done to the time lapse. Now if you guys remember, if anybody's used the time lapse fo or, or what some people call plot mode, uh, in the past, what it does is it takes a series of pictures at intervals. Uh, nothing needs to, to mo pass in front of the motion. Um, it just takes a picture every 30 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever. And then in the past on the multi cameras, it had a way of detecting when the light would come out and it would do this little algorithm and set it itself. I never liked that. I always wanted to have more control over it, but now you can. They've improved this, this function tremendously. So let's look at options. First is the interval. I like to set mine at like 30 seconds, uh, just because 10 seconds you're taking, you know, six pictures a minute. With this one, you're taking two pictures a minute. So it's less pictures to go through. The chance of me missing something in my food plots on the 10 second thing, it's pretty slim. So I usually set it at 30 seconds. That's just a personal preference. You can go all the way up to, look at this, 24 hours if you wanted to. You could take one picture a day. That would be good if you're doing like some kind of a time lapse like of a, like suppose you were clearing a food plot or if you were watching a cornfield grow or something, that's when you'd use something like that. But for watching game, I like to keep mine at 30 seconds. Now this is where it gets very interesting and I, I was absolutely blown away by what they did here. Um, so time-lapse programs per day, you can do one or two. We're gonna say two. Program start time. This allows you to set the start time of when the time-lapse actually, actually starts uh, uh, turning on and starts taking the interval photos. So let's say that sunrise is right at about 7 a.m. 
and we have activity from 7 to 10. So we set the start time at 7, we set the stop time at 10. And that's it. So that's our first program. Now it asks you for your second program. So suppose on this particular field you have activity only in the last half hour right before dark. And dark is at, let's say, 7 p.m. So the start time of when you wanted to start taking the interval pictures, 6 p.m. You go to the stop time, choose 7 p.m. And that's it. So now look at what we have. We have an interval of every 30 seconds it's going to take a picture. And it's going to take a picture every 30 seconds from 7 to 10 in the morning. And then it's going to take uh, a picture at every 30 seconds from 6 to 7 in the afternoon. Gives you tremendous uh, ways to customize and take pictures when you think you need to take pictures. I thought this was fantastic. But wait, it gets a little better than that. So now, in the past, during time lapse, if something walked in front of your camera at 12 noon and you didn't have it during that interval settings, it would never see it. Now it has time lapse plus motion detect. So if uh, that big buck you've been waiting for comes by at 11 o'clock and you have a, 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 t a program setting from 7 to 10, as soon as it trips your motion detector, it's going to take the picture. So you can have a combination. It's kind of best of both worlds. And I thought that was absolutely brilliant that they did that. So that's it. You can go back to general settings if you wanted to play with that. You can look at your pictures if you wish. Um, but right here, we'll just set it for motion detect, hit the start button, and then it starts your countdown, close up your, your camera, and you're all done.